Tomato Express load up screen. If any of you can't see that, there should be a little box there if you could raise your hand. Okay, nobody's got their hands up, so I'm assuming you can all see my screen, okay? Which is great. Um, I would ask you, if you have any questions, please make a note of them. Um, I'll try and leave enough time for some questions and answers at the end, um, just so we don't disturb the flow of the demonstration, uh, you know, during it. Okay, so uh, we'll crack on now. Then this is the Estimator Express main load-up screen. The demo itself I'll break down into three stages. The first, uh, the, the first part will be the setup of the software, uh, where you would alter your material prices, you know, your labor rates, um, just a general setup. The second part then will do some actual estimating, so we'll take a look at the, the engine or the guts of the software and show you how calculators work. And the final part then will be what I call the business end, uh, where it kicks out the completed quote for the client, and also a full range of reports and project management materials for you. Uh, just bear with me one second, guys. I think I've got a question there. Uh, bear with me one moment. Remy's saying the volume's a bit low. My apologies, Remy. I think maybe um, I think you should be able to, to turn it up a little on your speakers there. Um, I am quite loud, actually, so I get told in the office all the time. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's not me. Um, if you could maybe turn your speakers up, uh, and, you know, on your on your PC there. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I can adjust the volume myself a little bit, and I hope that's a bit better for you. Okay, so as I say, I think we've got everybody in now, so we'll uh, we'll kick off. Um, as I said, the first thing we'll do is take a look at the settings. So we'll pop into my settings there, and the all important price books. Now, if you just follow my mouse there up to the top left hand side of the screen, I'm just going to double click on master price book, and as you can see, we've broken down the prices there into labour, material, plant, subbies, and sundries. The first thing we'll take a look at, obviously, is the materials, where most of the information is held. Now, what you'll see in my piece of software is links to uh, some of the biggest suppliers in the UK. You also get the HBXL price tracker. Now, everybody gets those prices. Um, they're UK averages. We look at the prices that are coming from the likes of Juicens, Travis Perkins, etc., and we bring them down to UK average every couple of months for you. You can also link up to Juicens. Uh, we also have Travis Perkins, Keyline, uh, we have Trade UK, which also encompasses um, um, TradePoint, um, ScrewFix, PlumFix, and ElectricFix, all available within the software. Builders Express, you can see here, they're actually part of the Sheffield Insulation Group. They're their own builders merchants, and they only cover the southeast of the UK at the moment. Um, and the Builder Warehouse prices. Well worthwhile having your software. They're a national online merchant. They can deliver anywhere in the UK, and I believe over a certain amount, it's next day delivery. They've got massive buying power. They can go to the likes of Juicens and Travis and get a much bigger discount than you or I ever could. Um, there's a very good comparison tool as well within the software. Once you've completed all your costing, you click on compare, and it shows you how much money you could save by buying from Builder Warehouse in particular and on what products. So it could be worthwhile having the Builder Warehouse prices for a cost of £25 a year XVAT. And that is a cost um, across the board for all of our merchant links, by the way, um, just so you know we're not hiding anything from you. You can, of course, put your own products in. You can see there's some here I've done before. Uh, we've got a standard bag of sand there coming from Selco that I've popped in myself. You can see I've done it myself because it's highlighted in red, so it makes it a little bit easier for you to find them. One thing I would say, if you do enter products yourself, you do have to manually track that price. So if Salco changed their price uh, on that product, you'd have to manually update it within the system yourself. All of the merchant links, however, like your Juicens, Travis, uh, so on and so forth, they're builder specific. So you give us your Juicens account number, we enter that into the software, Whatever prices and whatever terms you've got agreed with Juicens, they'll show in front of you on the screen. It's specific to you and your business on whatever terms you've got agreed with them. To enter your own products in, dead easy. Just again, follow the mouse to the top left, click on New Resource, and free type in your own product. Lots of different connotations here for the type or the units of purchase. So whether it's a box full of something, or you're buying something by the foot, or you know by the square meter, or by the pack. Um, lots of different types in here as well. Again, you've got just about everything under the sun. 
and of course you can enter your own supplier in there just by clicking plus and you could pop in uh, Bob the Builders Merchants if you wanted to. Oh, if I can spell. <laughs> okay, so very, very simple to add in your own products. Um, and the same can be said with the labour as well. If I just go to section at the top here, you see where my mouse is, drop that down to show labour. You will have all these labour rates and all these trades pre-populated for you in the software. Um, as standard, they all are all set to an hourly rate. But again, you can put your own trade to people in if you want to. You can see this time I've, uh, I've done myself. We've got Tom, Dick, and Harry in there at £300 a day. So you can either follow the same process as you did with your materials and enter in your own trade just by clicking on New Resource. There you go, there's Tom, Dick, and Harry. Okay, or you can adjust the ones that are already in here simply by highlighting one of them. Okay, and going to edit resource, and that will give you then the capability of changing whether or not you want to pay them by the hour, how much you pay them by the hour. You might choose to pay all your trades on a day rate. Entirely up to you. At the end of the day, it's your business. The software is very flexible and it allows you to adjust it, you know, to suit you and how you uh, you run your business. So that's the price books covered. I'll just scroll down a little so you can just get a gist of how many different trades are in the uh, the software. Just about everything you could uh, you could need. Just in case it's anything unusual, we do have some here for specialist fitters. So you can just put in you know uh, anything unusual that you might need to. So we'll close off the materials price books now. Again, guys, if you have any questions, just hold off until the end, and I'll do my best to answer anything that you uh, you need to know. Specifications. Now your specs are like a big shopping list. What you're essentially saying to the software is every time you build, say, an extension, you're going to use a certain type of brick, certain type of insulation, so on and so forth. Of course, every job's different. You're going to use materials, uh, different materials, sorry, and you can actually change your spec from within the quote. Um, this is basically giving you a base idea of what you're going to use on a typical job. So if we just open up the extension spec, so what you're seeing here is you're saying that every time you build an extension, you're most likely to use this type of concrete, this type of uh, trench block, uh, this type of insulation, so on and so forth. And it's got every material and every trade you could possibly use for building an extension. Remember at this point, again, guys, this isn't just plucked out of the air. Um, our software has all been designed by a builder for builders to use. RMD Adrian, uh, the gentleman that initially uh, kind of designed the software, was a builder for over 30 years, uh, built over 80 or 90 new builds and over three, 400 extensions in his time as a builder. So there's an awful lot of construction knowledge gone into the software. Um, so it's not just, you know, pie in the sky. These are, you know, genuine uh, things that you'll see in the software and genuine calculations that it'll make for you. If you want to change these, uh, when you first get the package, you might think, okay, I never used Jab Floor. Um, you can right click, go to change resource, the software will then give you a list of all the different types of insulation you've got held from all your different suppliers. You might say, okay, I always use Kingspan. Okay, double click on the Kingspan, and just click on OK, and it's now going to default effectively to Kingspan every time you want to use an insulation type. But again, remember guys, you can change that from within the individual quote, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later in the demo. So we'll come out of the uh, the specs. Now you can see there's a couple of different ones here. We've got new build, extension, renovation. Uh, we've got prefab timber frame, and then we've got site fab timber frame. Uh, we've got one for offices and one for landscaping. Those two there, guys, you won't get them as standard. They're ones I've set up myself for demos I've done in the past. But dead easy to do your own spec. You just highlight one, copy it, and then you can set up your own spec for different types of jobs. The main differences between the specs you'll get as standard, obviously if you're doing a new build, you're going to use bigger plant, like a JCB rather than a mini digger, uh, maybe on site for a longer amount of time using bigger plant, uh, you know, bigger skips. Um, so it's all little things like that. Um, obviously if you're doing an extension, you'll probably use a mini digger, you know, less, uh, less plant on site, so on and so forth. But don't forget if you for, uh, don't worry if you forget everything I've told you today. You do get 12 months of support free of charge with the software. So anything you're stuck with, give our tech support team a ring. They'll be more than happy to talk you through it. Worst comes to worst, they can actually do what we're doing now. They can log into your PC, take control of your mouse, and go there. You go, Dave. Click here, click there, 
and uh, show you the next step forward. My favorites, this is going to be a handy little tool if you've got more than one supplier listed in the software. What it's basically allowing you to do is cherry pick from your prices. So you might be sat in the office thinking, OK, I know juicins are really, really good on aggregate. So you tick this box for juicins and aggregate. That way, any time the software costs an aggregate out, it will automatically go to your juicins price list. So it's giving you the best price possible. Um, you know, obviously then, winning you the most profit, uh, which I should imagine is why most of you are in business. So spend a little bit of time when you first get the software, especially if you've got a couple of suppliers in there. And just make sure you've got this set up properly. Um, you can set a default, so you can default the juicins, uh, you know, your prices to juicins for all of your products, or you can cherry pick a few of them out that you know, uh, you know, a different suppliers are, are cheaper on. I'm not going to apply that now because it does take a few minutes, and I don't want you sitting there bored waiting for that to happen. Profit and inflation. Again, this is setting a base rate. So you're saying, in an ideal world, every job that you do, you'd like to win 30% profit across the board on it. Again, you can set it up for the individual job that you're estimating. We're fully aware that every job's different. Uh, you might need to set your profit up and down according to area, according for the type of client you're working for. And you can do that when you actually start working on an individual estimate. Inflation as well, guys. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to go and look at a job tonight and start work tomorrow. There's going to be a period of time before the job starts. Now, it could happen that your prices go up within that time because of inflation. So this is just making sure that you're costing or factoring that into your quote. Because otherwise, if your prices on your materials go up by 10%, you've effectively lost 10% of your quote. If your customer, sorry, 10% of your profit. If your customer isn't covering the inflated costs. So you can set this up and say, OK, I want to kick in at 5% after 13 weeks of the quote being produced. OK, so you can show your customer how much inflation is going to affect their, uh, affect their, uh, their payments too. And again, guys, we can set this up for the individual job. We'll take a look at that once we start estimating. Now, there's nothing I can show you as yet in the reports or the bar charts. We haven't actually generated in any information because we haven't started estimating. My groups of workbooks, you'll all get these. These are predefined templates that Adrian's put into the software just to make it a little bit easier for new users. So you haven't got to go through and set all these up yourselves. You'll have a predefined set of workbooks for a house, for a bungalow. We've got renovation works there. We've got apartment, exterior, and interior. And you can, of course, group those together if you want to and do it as a complete job. Scrolling across, you'll see lots of different kinds of extensions. Extensions being very, very prevalent at the moment. We've got lofts there, so you know the software will cover loft conversions, attic conversions for you. We've got different kinds of garages there. The software will even do smaller works like groundworks, landscaping, conservatories, even small decorating jobs. So you know the software is capable of covering everything from new build right the way down to maintenance and renovations and everything in between as well. Um, our ultimate edition, just to mention quickly, this is the total toolkit. Our ultimate edition would also do um, offices and shop fitting. Um, so if you do do any commercial work, it might be worth you looking at the ultimate. Works in exactly the same fashion as this one does, just slightly different calculators. So that's just giving you an idea of the type of work and uh, the calculators that are predefined for you. So we'll just close that one off now. That's basically the setup of the software done, guys. It will take you an hour or so to make sure it's right for your business when you first get it. Um, but it's well worth doing to make sure that you're absolutely in line with the way you want to run things. So we'll come back out of that screen now. Um, there's a download prices button. That's the only time the software needs to be online, other than when you first register it. And what that will do is if you've got, say, a Juicens account, you click that button, it will give you all your latest prices and your terms applied coming from Juicens. I recommend to people, if they're using the software a lot, do it every time. I mean, you know, you could have a big change in something like your, your concrete, for instance. Okay? If you don't download your prices, you could be a few hundred quid out. It might not sound like a lot of money, but if you do it on every job, it soon mounts up. Uh, we'll go into my estimates now. And we're coming on to the second part of the demo now, guys. This is where we'll actually start doing some estimating. So this is probably the bit that's going to interest you a bit more. Um, again, just to give you a little idea, the software will do everything from apartments. And we've got a block of apartments there that are over a quarter of a million. 
We've got landscape and work down the bottom here, which is just three and a half thousand. Even down to small works, we've got renovation here. I think there's just a, uh, a complete room redecoration or something along those lines. £871. So you've got something that's a quarter of a million right down to less than a thousand pounds. And that's all encompassed within one package. Some of our competitors, you've got to go back and buy different packages to do different work. So you could end up spending a thousand pounds and only be able to do new builds. What happens if somebody asks you to renovate their house? What happens if somebody asks you to do an extension? You've got to go back and spend another 500, another thousand, and it all starts mounting up. With HBXL, you know you've got the capability to cost out everything within one package. Okay, so just moving on, then we'll go to new estimate, and again, that's at the top left. Give the job a name. Now, I'm going to call it webinar job, just so I can find it nice and easily. Job description, I'm going to say today we're doing a simple extension, nothing too fancy. You can change your job number, obviously, if you want to. Click on next. Working from the master price book. The reason there's a drop-down box there, um, you can actually set yourself up regional price books. You copy the entire master price book. Say, for instance, you're based in, um, I don't know, Birmingham, but you've got a big job in London. You're going to be buying your materials in London. You know London prices are going to be much higher. So you can add maybe a 10% increase on all your materials. And then use your London price book to price the job. So again, flexibility and just making it better for you to keep track of how you're working in different areas. I know a lot of builders are branching out at the moment, moving out of areas, so it could be something that's quite relevant to you. Click on next. We'll use the extension spec. Click on next again. And select a group of workbooks. Now, if you wanted to do just one individual job, okay, you can scroll down, find the calculator you want. Okay, so you might just be replacing a suspended floor in an attic. You would tick that box. Okay, and it would just ping up that calculator for you. For today, though, I want to show you a couple of different ones. So I've got one uh, in true blue pizza style, some I set up earlier. If I just scroll down and find extension demonstration, click on next. Now, the software will automatically produce a build program or a Gantt chart for you. All you need to do is tell it the start date. So we'll say we're starting on the 21st there. Tell the software what kind of job you're doing. So we'll just drop that down and say we're doing a small extension. Again, lots of different types there for you. Click on Next and pop the customer's details in. Now, this is for the cover sheet when you produce the quote for the client. Um, so I'm going to pop my details in because obviously I want you to see what the software uh, kicks out in its full glory. So just bear with me one sec while I type all the usual uh, nondescript stuff in there. I'll just put my office number in, because I know that one off by heart. There you go. Click on Next. Now you're setting up the profit for the individual job. You're sat in your office at ABC Builders. You're thinking, Paula's driving around in a Ferrari. She can afford to give me 35% on my labor. So you're setting that for this individual job you're on. It's not affecting the base rate that you've got set for the entire piece of software. That will stay at the 30% we set it at at the beginning. Click on Next. Again, the inflation, just consider when the job's going to start and whether or not you want the customer to pay uh, for those uh, inflated costs. Click on Next and Finish. And the software now is just going to group together all of those calculators, ready for me to work through and just enter dimensions into. Okay, so looking at these here, um, I'm just going to pick out a couple that I think would be relevant to most builders, to most jobs. It's kind of hard when you're doing a webinar because I appreciate that you know, I could have two of you guys might only do new builds, two of you might only do renovation work, two of you might only do extension work, uh, sorry, insurance work. So I'll try and pick out a few things that will be relevant to different areas for you. First one I always show is a brick and block cavity wall. Nine times out of ten, um, you guys are going to be doing some wall work. Okay, so we'll just uh, open that one up. Give it a name. This is for your reference. Imagine you're looking at an estimate and it's got ten different walls. I need, you need to change the type of brick you're using on one wall. You'd have to go through all 10 of those walls and find out which one it is. So if you name them 1 to 10, it makes it a little bit easier for you. The location, again, you've got a lot of different choices here. If I just type in EXT, it's predictive, just like your mobile, it'll find extension for me. Click on OK. Tell the software whether or not it's a single or double story wall. Uh, without foundations, or indeed if we're just doing foundations or just gable. I'm going to say we're doing the full lot, but it's a single-story cavity. 
And this, guys, is a dimensions wizard. This is how pretty much all of the calculators in the software work, and it's dead easy. You've got your tech tips. This is the information at the top here. As I click through these boxes, you'll see that information change. So this one here is the length of your main wall. This one here is the height of the main wall, and you'll see that is set to an industry standard of two and a half meters, and areas of openings in the wall. Now, what is that, that's doing, um, it's not costing out a window. It's taking away the amount of bricks, the amount of trade it would have taken to lay those bricks, so on and so forth. So if I put one and a half square meter of windows in there, even if you've got two windows that are one and a half square meters, add them together, stick it in there as a three meter hole. It'll still factor it out in the same way, it just needs to know the meter edge. Same kind of thing with your, uh, your wall length. If you're looking at your set of plans, you're thinking, okay, I've got a six meter wall in front of me here that's front facing, I've got a three meter wall that runs up that side, and I've got a three meter that runs up that side too. Instead of doing three separate walls, bang it in there as a 12 meter wall. It'll cost it out in exactly the same manner. Click on next, and you've got your foundation detail. Again, you've got your tech tips, so you've got a little bit of help there as a new user to the software. And we've also got tech labels. I've spoken to quite a few builders recently that are getting you know, their sons involved with estimating. A few of you are even getting the girlfriends and the wives involved, which is fantastic. Um, but you know, obviously, they might not be fully up to date with building terminology. So these tech labels can help them understand what they're seeing on the screen. So all you're doing now is changing the mass concrete thickness the structural concrete thickness, obviously there you've got the depth of the foundation and the width of the foundation. It's asking about plank and strut, obviously there's a cost to that, most of you probably will use plank and strut, um, and obviously bulking up of all the materials, software's clever enough to know, you dig out a ton of clay from the ground, as soon as it hits oxygen, it bulks up, so you need to make sure you've got a big enough skip, it's going to be on site long enough, so on and so forth. Click on next. You've got footing details. The kind of thing you guys are going to be used to costing anyway. It's just on front, in front of you on the screen. So you would just work through these, change your dimensions from your set of plans. You've got a couple of yes, no questions there. Things like, is the main wall insulated? Is there a separate damp proof course? As soon as you say yes, it will automatically cost out all the labor material and plant associated with that job. Click on next again. And we've got some decorating work as well. So it's just asking for finishing. Are you going to be doing the decorating, plastering, so on and so forth? Click on finish. It's cost about that 12 meter wall at 4,755.12, as you can see just at the top there. That is X VAT and profit. Your VAT and your profit don't show until the end when you actually produce the quote for the client. Now, if you want to have a look at what's actually gone into that, uh, that workbook or that calculator, Click on View Resource Output at the top, and that's told me every product, every material, every tradesperson, and every piece of plant that's going to be involved in building that wall. So you can see exactly what you've used, exactly what trades you're using, what they're going to be doing, and how long it's going to take them. Even things like your shovel. I mean, okay, you don't buy a new shovel on every job you do, that would be ridiculous, but you've got to factor in for wear and tear. Sooner or later, you've got to buy new tools. So why not factor a few quid into every quote that you wouldn't necessarily think about if you were doing this manually? Now, I don't know if you remember, guys, but I said to you a little while back about changing the specs from actually within the quote. I'll show you how to do that now. If we go to Resource Wizard, I'm going to skip on to the next page. It looks like the Dimensions Wizard, but it allows you to change your spec from within the estimate. So I'm just going to highlight the bricks for use in Splash Course. If you come over to this side, follow my mouse over, we've got the resource type as a brick. The resource we're using at the moment is an engineering brick. Okay, now if I drop that list down, again, just like your specifications, you've got a list of all the different bricks we've got in the software. I'm going to change that over to a Ketley brick. Now I would ask you guys, keep an eye on that price at the top there where my mouse is at the moment. As I click on this Ketley brick, it's going to automatically recalculate up because it knows it's a more expensive brick. The only thing it's going to ask you to do is double check usage factors. Again, the kind of thing you think, you know, you're going to be manually doing in your head anyway. How many bricks am I going to need to cover the square meter? How many do I need to order? Again, set to a standard, roughly 60 bricks for a square meter. And do you want to include wastage in that? Okay, click on OK there. 
And just to show you as well, you can do exactly the same thing with your labour as well. So if you want to change where you've allocated your labour on a particular build phase or a particular job, drop the box down at the bottom, flick that over to labour, plant, sullies and sundries. Let's have a look for one that's got more than one on there. Here we go, we've got layer of block work. At the moment we're saying we're going to use a two-in-one gang to do that. Now you're thinking, okay, I can get one of my brookies to go off to another site and do something else for me. So again, we'll drop down that list. When I change it over to bricklayer and laborer, keep your eye on that cost just at the top there again. It will recalculate it out for me. So it's dropped the price a little because you're using less trades. So that's just given you a, an overview of how you can change your spec uh, from within your quote. I mean, you're bound to have had fussy customers in the past who've changed their mind about what color tile they want on their roof. Back in the day, you'd be on the phone to different suppliers, getting the best price for the tile, sitting there with your calculator, figuring out how many you're going to need. I mean, that in itself could take you a good 20 minutes, half an hour. With the software in front of you, it takes seconds. So just that little uh, feature can save you a lot of time with your estimating. So we'll close that off now. We'll close off that calculator just by going back and then close. The software will ask you if the workbook's complete. Just because you say it is, it doesn't mean to say you can't go back in. It's not locked it down or anything. Uh, if Mrs. Bloggs change her changes her mind about the colored tiles, again, you could just go in and readjust it. So that's just one of the calculators. Should we have a look at something a little bit more renovation-based? Let's have a look at... Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, we'll go removal of plaster ceiling. Okay, so if we just go... Uh, I'll just make something up. There we go, remove plaster from ceiling, um, and again, you can pick anything you like, but I'm just going to keep it simple and pop extension in. Click on OK, small area of ceiling, click on select, and again, the dimensions wizard. So once you've got used to using one of these calculators, they're pretty much all the same. Again, you've got your tech tips if you need them. So all we're doing here is entering the width of the ceiling, the length of the ceiling, Obviously, you might have some funny shaped areas, so you could pop that in by the squared meter there. Any areas of openings. Obviously, if you're going up into an attic, there could be a, I don't know, three or four square foot hole there that you need to factor out. And the thickness of the plaster to be removed. Obviously, depending on the thickness is how long it's going to take your, uh, your guys to take it off. Again, set to an industry standard at 0.025 there. Click on Next. This is where your knowledge will come in. We've given you kind of a default. So it's going to say you're going to need a wheelbarrow for one day. You're going to need a shovel for one day. Um, any additional plant that's needed. Is the plaster debris to be removed from site? Obviously, that's going to factor in a skip for you, so on and so forth. Click on Finish, and that's costed out at just under £135 there. And again, you can see what's gone into it. Remember, if you want to see it in more detail, go to Resource Output. So I think I'll just show you one more calculator. I'm aware that it's um, we're about halfway through the demo now, um, so time's ticking on. Um, what I'd like to show you in particular is a roof, um, Apex Valley roof. Now, a lot of builders I speak to, they say that the roof can really be the bane of the estimating uh, because there's so much involved. Uh, so many, not necessarily different trades, but materials, uh, finicky little bits and bobs. So I'm going to show you you can cost out a roof in about five minutes. Choose whether or not you want to include fascias and barge boards. If you're going to be doing the uh, plastering and insulation to a vaulted ceiling or just a standard ceiling, I'm going to keep it as standard. Click on Select. And again, we've got the Dimensions Wizard. Got your tech tips there. Got your tech labels there again to help you understand what you're seeing on the screen. And all you're doing is entering the soffit width. You've got the wall width. Obviously, there you've got the clear span of the joists. Same opposite on this side, wall width and soft, soffit width. Couldn't say that then. Um, obviously, you've got the slope or the pitch of the roof, the parent roof that it's going to cut into. Um, obviously, you've got numbers of purlins, binders, so on and so forth. Oh, incidentally, when you see this little camera at any point during the software, it means you can basically take a little snapshot of what's in front of you. This could be really handy explaining to a client why you have to do something in a certain way maybe showing a specialist fit or something you need them to do. Um, so it can be a really handy little tool for you. It just saves it to your, uh, your clipboard, basically, your desktop. Click on Next. We've got some more structural information for the roof there. Again, just working through, guys, and changing these dimensions. 
excuse the phone ringing in the background there. <laughs> we'll click on next and some tying and insulation detail. For any of you guys up in Scotland, we do allow for sarking board. Uh, it was something that was put into the software a little while ago. I think it's to do with the, the weather you have up there. You have an extra layer of insulation. Um, so it is included in the software. It's there for you to use. Click on next again. Again, just some finishing detail. Are we going to be doing the plastering and decorating? And then click on finish. Now, just think, guys, even if you were sat there manually entering those dimensions and changing every one of them, probably take you about five, ten minutes to cross out a roof. Just sit and think for a second how long does it normally take you to cost out something to that detail. We're costed out now at $5,159.95. Again, X fat and profit. Um, that's the roof complete, so we'll close that one off. That workbook is complete. Now, I've shown you a few calculators there. Um, so if you're happy with that, guys, I would like to move on uh, because you've still got quite a bit to cover and we've only got about 20 minutes left. So uh, what I'll do now is move on to the Gantt chart or the schedule of works. This has given me a standard planning chart for an extension. Now, obviously, we haven't done anywhere near that amount of uh, estimating today. If I want to see the job as I've costed it so far, just to calculate it I've completed today, Go to Remove and Use Build Phases, again at the top here. The software at this stage will still double check with you. It'll say, look, are you sure you don't want to cost these out before we get rid of them? So even at this point, the software is making sure you're not missing anything. So it's quite intuitive in that respect. I'm going to say yes, we don't need to cost any of that out. And it's given me now a true timeline as to the work we're going to be doing. The only thing I need to do, we've got the demolition work there, which is the hacking off a of plaster. We're not going to wait six months before we do the foundations. That would just be ridiculous. To bring the foundations back in line with the demolition work, go to Edit Bar Chart again at the top there. I'll just bring that up a little so you can see it better. Make sure you've got the foundation or the one that you want to adjust highlighted. So that would be foundations. Go to Start Week and just bring that back to zero or week one or however you want to do it. You can see it's moving along there. Click on Cascade. And that's moved all your other jobs along, including your handover date. So when you're finishing that, it's adjusted that. You can do the same with the duration. Say, for instance, uh, I don't know, typical British weather, site's been flooded out, all your foundations, you're up to three foot of water. So you need to drain that all out and let it dry out before you can carry on. Take your duration of your foundations up to maybe four or five weeks. You can see it's adjusted that timeline there. Again, click Cascade, and it's moved everything along accordingly can be really handy, again, to show to Mrs. Bloggs to say, look, you chose to change your mind on the type of tile you wanted to use. I've now got to import those over from Spain because they're special tiles. That means it's going to be another three weeks before your job's completed. So at least your client will understand why the job handover date or the completion date has been delayed. Close that off now. So that's just an overview of the, uh, the schedule of works that the software produces for you. We'll now go to the report section. We're getting towards what I call the business end of the software now. There's over 40 reports in here. Uh, when you get the software, I suggest spend half an hour just having a look through and just gauge which ones are going to be most relevant to you, which ones you'd use the most. All the ones at the top here, these are either um, pie charts or bar charts, and these are what I call the money reports. So these are showing you things like your cost of materials, for instance. I'll just pick that one out. Show me um, all my cost of materials for the particular job, for everything that we've costed during the demo today. It's showing you it in percentages. If you want to see it in pounds sterling, just click on toggle, and it'll give you it in pounds and pence as well. What's quite handy is you can see what the costs are. I'm sure you'd like to know how much profit you win on these materials. So you can just close off that particular report, jump up to above it. You've got profit by material. Again, I'll just click on toggle. And you can see exactly how much money you're making off of any of the, these materials. Might lead you going to your suppliers and negotiating a better discount with them. You never know. But again, it's just going to help you keep your pricing nice and tight and make sure that your, uh, your company stays healthy. Click on close again. Um, the reports down the, uh, the bottom here, these are all either Word documents or Excel spreadsheets. The majority of them are Excel pivot tables, which means you can drag and drop information in. Okay, the one I'd like to show you straight away is materials used. Now, this one, whenever I show this on a demo, always gets a lot of oohs and ahs. 
Um, this is the one that I think you probably make a lot of use out of. It gives you a complete breakdown of every single material you're going to use on this job. It works out all your quantities required and your wastage, so you're never going to be on site thinking, oh, do you know what, I, I ordered a thousand bricks, why have I run out? Uh, because Bob, your brickie has wasted 10%. Uh, so it's factored the wastage in, so it's up your order quantity, therefore making sure you're not going to run out of anything. Come across to the side here, we've got total costs, including your wastage. And if we scroll down, it's given me a complete amount of all materials we're going to use. Again, XFAT, obviously no profit tagged in there. Um, but that's showing you how much all your materials are going to use on this job. Now, what's clever about this, because it's a pivot table, uh, it means you can actually drag and drop information in. So if you want to, you can bring in a date required on site. And off the back of that one, you can also bring in an order by date. So just by quickly looking at this report, you can see exactly when you need to order, say, for instance, your, uh, your sand. You need to order on the 26th of the 5th to have it on site by the 2nd of the 6th. And that obviously comes from your lead times or your order times within your, uh, your price books. You can even, if you want to, bring an item used for, so you can see exactly what the materials are going to be used for. So the software itself and the reports are very, very flexible. You really can tailor them to your heart's content. Put your suppliers in if you want to, so you can see which supplier you need to phone on what date. I mean, we can't make it any easier for you, really. These are fully exportable, by the way. Just click on Export Report. Give it just a moment, and it'll ask you where you want to save it. OK, so I'm going to say uh, Demo Report. Save it on my desktop. Give it just a second. If I go onto my desk, that's my lovely little granddaughter there, looking all lovely in her Welsh gear. Click on demo report. Just give it a second. Oh, hello, she's thinking about it. I spent half my day waiting for the computer to do something. There we go. That's exactly the same report as we just saw within Estimator Express. So obviously, then, you can ping this list off to your suppliers if you want to. Um, and again, have it up on a wall in the office. She's going to help you project manage things. Okay, so we'll close that off now. Go back into the software there, and we'll close that report. Again, you can do the same thing with your labor. So we'll just open up the labor task list. Okay, this is giving you a breakdown of uh, all the different laborers we're going to use on site. You might not necessarily use the order by date, so you can take that out. But what I always suggest, if you've got a site office, why not stick this up in the site office with the item used for in there? That way, your trades can come in in the morning, have a look at what they're supposed to be doing on site that day, and effectively project manage themselves. Okay, in an ideal world, that would happen. Um, you know, it might not necessarily happen on every job or with all of your trades. Um, but, you know, it's certainly something that you can have up, you know, on site or maybe even in your office. Um, just so you know what sites are doing what on what day. Um, again, it's just helping you streamline things and keep things nice and easy. So we'll close that report now. I'm not going to go through any more reports, guys, because it is about 22. We've still got the quote to have a look at, and I do want to leave some room for some questions at the end. Um, so again, guys, just when you've got time, familiarize yourself with these reports and just see which ones you'd like to use yourselves for your business. So the finished product then, let's have a look at the quote itself. We'll just go to Word Printouts, click on Quote Wizard by Bill Faze. The software is going to ask you how much information you want to include on the quote. You've got no resources. You can take out your face pictures. So you've got a very basic looking quote with just a, you know, an overview of a Bill Faze and then an end cost. You can have key resources, so just a little bit of information. Obviously, guys, I want you to see what the software is capable of, so I'm going to pop it onto all resources. I'm going to pop the phase totals in, so you'll have an end cost for each build phase. Build phase pictures, no doubt you've got your own website. Why not put pictures of jobs you've done in the past onto your quote? You're using it effectively like a portfolio, saying to Mrs. Blogs, here's an example of a loft conversion or an extension I've done in the past. Customer-friendly descriptions. Mrs. Bloggs doesn't care what maker cement you use. She just wants to know that it's cement. So it's just keeping the quote a little bit easier to read for your client. Order quantities. I should think you'll probably only use that if you're working for like local authorities or something along those lines. Otherwise, you're just giving Mrs. Bloggs the opportunity to go, oh, I can get my bricks cheaper at Pound Stretcher. I'll get those in. 
Okay, so the majority of builders will actually leave those off from my experience. Under more, we've got things like your preferences. Now, this is where you can pop in your own company letterheads. This is something I get asked about a lot when I'm, when I'm discussing the software. Yes, you can bespoke it. Um, you can take out the HBXL headers and footers just at the bottom there. And you can put your own contact details in if you want, your own company logos. You can change the fonts, so on and so forth. So that's just held and your preferences within the, uh, the quote section there. For now, though, we're just going to click on print. Specify our VAT. Obviously, if you do a new build, it'll be VAT free, or uh, you know maybe certain parts of the country. I think Jersey, etc. I could be wrong there, so please don't quote me on that. Um, obviously, the standard 20%, or you can do it at a specified value, so pounds and pence. Click on OK. Now, guys, I'm just going to grab myself a glass of water very quickly while that's producing the quote, because I'm drying out a little bit. Just bear with me one moment. Okay, that's better. I can breathe again now and I can speak. I know I'm a girl and we're used to talking a lot, but, you know, after 45 minutes, it does great on your throat a little bit. Um, but I'm all good now. So we've got the uh, the extension there, or the quote there. And my apologies. It's certainly not an extension, is it? I'll just pop it into print preview um, so you can see exactly what the client would see. So here's the customer's details that I put in in the beginning there. Um, as you can see, I've entered myself in. I just made up an address. So you've got a nice cover sheet, and just imagine that with your own company logos and letterheads on there, looking very professional. As I said, you can take that little head right. If you don't want people to know you're using software, let the client think you've been slaving over a hot PC for hours on end. They don't need to know you're using our software. We also give you one of these letters. Remember, this is a Word document, so you can alter the text in there if you want. You might want to put in uh, something like any variants to this quote must be signed off and agreed to before work commences. Uh, something along those lines, just so you don't end up with these, oh, just while you're here, can you do this jobs, and never end up getting paid for them. So we'll crack on and get into the quote itself. The quote itself then is broken down into build phases. Each build phase will have a description of that build phase, and then you'll have a breakdown of labor, material, and plant associated with that build phase. So obviously demolition, there's only going to be labor involved. We're using the general laborer. And it's going to cost 243.34. That price there, your 30% profit is hidden away. Your VAT won't show until the end. It's shown as a separate entity. Got your foundations. Again, a description of what we're going to be doing for the foundations. There's your materials, obviously your concrete, all your trade guys that you're going to be using, and any plant that you're going to be using. And again, the, uh, the cost for that particular bill phase. Scrolling through then, we've got the footings. I personally think, and I know I'm biased because I work for the company, um, but it is a very nicely laid out quote. It's very professional. Um, you know, I personally, if a builder was to come to me um, and have this kind of quote, even if he was four or five grand more expensive than somebody presenting it on the back of a fag packet, as they say, I go for this quote every day of the week. At the end of the day, clients are trusting you to come into their home. They're trusting you with a lot of money. They're trusting you with their property. The better or the, the, the higher level of professionalism you put across, the more likely they are to take you on. Stands to reason, really. So we've got the brickwork shell, again, broken down nicely for you. The roof structure. OK, so you can see that nothing's been, uh, been forgotten here. We've got things like your wall plate and your, your soffit carriers and things that we didn't necessarily put a cost to. The software knows you're going to need to cost out, so it's added it in for you and put a price against it. There's your labor, your roof tiling. Then we've got the plastering work there. And some more internal decoration. Now, we've come to the end of the estimate. Now, even from those few calculators, we've got a, a decent amount of uh, pages. I think it was about eight or nine pages. Your VAT, again, shown as a separate entity. And your profit is hidden away. You certainly don't want Mrs. Bloggs knowing you're winning 30% profit off her job. You give her a heart attack. Um, so that's hidden away nicely for you there, so the client doesn't need to know what percentage you're working at. We also give you two of these letters out of the box, guys. There's one for you, and there's one for the client. 
at the end of the day, get them to sign and date it. Again, put that little uh, line of text in if you want about variants and they just need to be signed off before you do the work. There's one for you. There's one for the client. The very last part of the software is the T's and C's. At the end of the day, it's not our business. It'd be pretty damn cheeky of us to predetermine the T's and C's and put them in there for you. Uh, within your preferences, though, that I showed you a moment ago, you can actually set up your T's and C's so that every time you produce a quote, this blank page will automatically be populated with your terms and conditions. So it's not like you're going to have to free type that out every time you produce a quote. Uh, you know, we're not that, uh, not that nasty. We won't make you do that. That kind of uh, defeat the whole purpose of having the software, I suppose. So that, guys, in a nutshell, is Estimator Express. I'm hoping you've enjoyed my demo. I hope I didn't talk too quickly. I'm a Welsh girl. I do talk uh, fairly quick. Um, and I'm hoping I've showed you everything you need to see or at least help you make an informed decision because that's the, the whole point of the demo. We have got about 10 minutes free. Um, so I'll hand fire for a minute to allow you to ask any questions that you want to. Um, I'll just pop you on, uh, on pause there. And I'm just going to pop you on hold, let you listen to our lovely hold music and just think about any questions that you've got. Uh, but I will be online, so you've got a little chat box there. Anything you'd like to ask me, feel free. Just pop it into the chat box, and I'll, uh, I'll come back to you and answer any questions you've got. Thanks, guys. Okay, I've got a couple of questions here. Um, Remy is asking, on what basis do we calculate costs? Um, I'm assuming you mean kind of the labor rates, etc. cetera. Um, they'll either be set to you know, a, a basic industry standard, um, or they'll be um, from Adrian's knowledge. Um, so you're talking, you know, we might set a, you know, a, a bricklayer in there at kind of, I don't know, I don't know what the rates are, to be honest. Um, if we've got some bricklayers, that will scream at me now, but you can have a bricklayer in there at 20 quid an hour, for instance. Um, but Ravi, what you can do is very easily go in and adjust all those prices yourself. Uh, it's dead simple to do. Things like that are covered in the manual. The manual itself is broken down into 20-minute segments. So you haven't got to sit there and go through a, you know, a yellow page's worth of tutorials in one hit. Uh, you can flick through, find something that's relevant to what you're trying to learn at the time, um, and just run through that. Okay, so I hope that's answered that for you, Remy. Um, Andy is also asking, hi, Andy. Um, he's also asking how much the package is. Um, this package, this is the total toolkit. This one retails at 898x max. Um, just to throw this in as a bit of food for thought for you guys, it's actually on offer until the close of play on Friday. Um, you can take it for 675x max. So it's quite a hefty saving. Reason for that is we've just done the home, home building and renovating show up in Birmingham. Uh, so we've extended the show offers. Um, out for about an extra week to anybody that couldn't make it to the show. Um, we had quite a few people that were really keen to make it along, but you know, work or anything was a priority, so they couldn't make it. So, in answer to that, Andy, if you buy it before Friday, love it's um, six seven five X fat. After Friday, it goes back up to the eight nine eight X fat. That's a lifetime license, so it'll never switch off. You get twelve months of support free of charge with the software. So, as I said before, anything at all that you're stuck with. Give us a ring, and our support guys will be able to point you in the right direction. Okay. Um, it's a single-user license, so it will only work on one PC, but you can have additional licenses. At point of purchase, if it's only for you to use, so it's not you know, another estimator or anything, um, then you can always um, have an additional install free of charge. So we'll give you an additional install just for you to use, but if you've got a team of 10 estimators, then we would charge you 199 XMAT, per package. Okay, Andy, I hope that's answered that for you. Uh, let's have a look. I've got a question from Paul. Hiya, Paul. I've spoken to you a few times. Hope you're okay. Um, software gets prices from all merchants. Um, yeah, I mean, there is actually something within the software called e-building supplies, which I didn't show you, which is a bit naughty of me, really. What it basically allows you to do 
is ping off um, your materials list. You know when I showed you that materials list at the end of the software? It allows you to put in a postcode. Now you can put in a um, site-specific postcode or you know your, your office-specific postcode, and it pings off that list of materials to local independent merchants in that area. What they would then do is grab your merchant or your material list, and they will email you back their most competitive prices. So what I usually suggest to people in that instance is use the HBXL price tracker, take a look over it in first instance to get an idea as to whether it's too high or too low for your area, cost out from that, and you can always put a 10% increase or a 10% decrease blanket across all of those materials. And that way, when you go into, sorry, you said use orchard timber, that way when you go into orchard timber, you know you're getting a competitive price anyway. At the end of the day, if you're costing out and using the HBXL price tracker, they're maybe 5% more expensive than orchard timber. Um, it's not a problem. You're winning the job. You're buying materials from orchard timber. You're winning even more money on the job. So it's a win-win situation, really. Remember as well, Paul, that you can put your own products in. So if you've got, say, 20, 30 products that you buy on a regular basis from orchard timber, enter them into your materials price book, set them up in your spec so that you're saying, every time I use a timber for, I don't know, my roof work, I want it to go to the orchard timber prices that I've put in. Robert's your mother's brother. It's all done, basically. But again, things like that, give the tech boys a ring. They just sit there in the office playing cards all day if you guys aren't phoning them and giving them something to do. And then the sales team just get funny with them because we're busy working and they're not. So feel free to give them a ring anytime you need to. Um, that, that really is what we're here for. And we do pride ourselves with our support. We're not one of these companies that are going to take your money and run. Uh, we want you to be happy using the software. We want you to be willing to work with it. And we want you to be telling all your other builder friends how fantastic we are. Um, so, of course, we're going to look after you. Okay, that, that looks like it's all the questions that I've got for now. Um, I'm hoping you enjoyed the demonstration. I've spoken to a few of you before. Paul, I'll give you a shout tomorrow to see what your thoughts are. I'll hang fire in the office for about another five minutes. Um, I should imagine most of you have spoken to uh, to one of the, the team or another in the office. I am here for another five, ten minutes. If you would like to go ahead now, I can certainly get that sorted out for you. Feel free to give me a ring on 011791678. That's 011791678. I'll log off from the demo now, um, let you go and watch the football. I understand Bayern Munich are playing tonight. Apparently, they're a pretty big team. As I said, I'm a Welsh girl, so it's all about the rugby for me. I'm not really that keen on football. But I bet you're, uh, you're gagging to crack open a tinny and sit there and watch the football. So I'll leave you to it now, guys. Thank you ever so much for your time. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to do some business over the next few days. Again, thanks for your time and have a good evening. Bye-bye.